Okay, so this lab is all about is all about workshop zero. And this lab is all about workshop zero. So we want to learn how to have a repository on GitHub and be able to use that to do all our work in OOP244 in that repository. So number one, I don't want to see you having any files related to OOP244 in anywhere else other than the repository on your computer, the one you cloned. Everything has to be there. You should constantly commit and push, commit and push. And I'm going to tell you the steps. So we're going to, like kindergarten people, we're going to repeat all together to put it in our memory. Number one. Number two, computer programming is an exact science. When I tell you jump twice, you jump twice. Don't ask why. When I tell you to pull your ear, you pull your ear. When I tell you download putty and install it, download putty and install it. Okay? It's important. Why do I say that? Because I'm using putty to create your assignments. And all terminal clients pass different types of protocols to server and get it back. I may create an assignment that has a special character in it that your terminal doesn't pass that one. Therefore, submitter thinks your code is incorrect and you cannot submit your workshop. Download PuTTY. It is ex extremely important. If you don't want to use Tortoise Git, fine. You want to do command line Git, that's fantastic. No problem. If you want to do all hands-on geeky thingy, I love that. No problem with that whatsoever. But the terminal client you connect to Matrix with is PuTTY and nothing else. Okay? Second, when I ask you in README file, write such and such and such, you write that one exactly as I asked you. I have received so many invitations. And when I look at it, git ignore file doesn't have the contents I asked for. Readme file doesn't have the things that I asked for. Somebody created something and sent it to me because it's on GitHub. I have no idea who this person is. It's ABC562. And invited me for, and I'm like, what is this? It, I don't know what is the subject. I don't know what is the section. I don't know what is the name. So the things I ask you, you do. And it's extremely important you follow these things. These are stuff that you need to know. And so let me tell you what happens. When you are learning how to drive, you, you drive in a city. They tell you how to stop in a traffic light. and do You do all these things. You follow the rules to the point. And when you are a good driver, then you can actually go to a track and go 200 kilometers an hour. To be able to break the rules, you need to know them first. This is extremely important. This is an exact science. When I ask you a dot and a semicolon, it is a dot and a semicolon. Not two dots and a semicolon, not dot space semicolon. It is a dot and a semicolon. So let's put that away and understand that perfectly, OK? Done. So please do that. And now I'm going to come one by one to you. And if you have done your workshop zero and you got a check mark from me, you're OK. It doesn't mean leave because we want to do something. I'm just going to help everyone who did not complete. Uh, and if you look at me as a collaborator, if you see I accepted your, uh, your request as a collaborator, it means I received your email. And if you have done your work properly and I didn't give you a mark, it means I made a boo-boo, okay? So please tell me, three people for some unknown reason actually uh, did it perfectly and I added it, but I see there's no mark and probably I gave the mark to the next person by mistake. <laughs> so so uh, we'll see. Anyways, so why are we doing this? Why we are using Git? The reason we are using Git is first, we don't want to use FTP anymore. FTP, SFTP, WinSCP, SH, whatever. Throw those things away. What you need to do is to have a major source of your code. That is on GitHub. So that's the source of everything. We call that upstream. Why? Because it's the source of the river where it comes. Okay? You put everything over there. 
then you go to your laptop, you start doing your work, and as you continue doing your work, you do four things. So, the process of development is this. As soon as you open your computer and you want to open Visual Studio, you want to open Xcode, you want to open whatever to do the work, the very first thing you do is pull. You pull the repository. That should be your habit. It's like you wake up, you brush your teeth. That's what it is. First, you do a pull. Okay? After you have done the pull, 90% of the time, the pull is going to say everything's up to date. You don't have anything new. But sometimes I go over there, I do a little fiddling and tell you, like, this part you have done wrong, this part you have done. So I want you to get those things. You don't know that I changed it. So you pull. Then after you pull, you do your work. Okay? So pull, one, two, do the work. After doing the work, you're going to washroom, add, commit, double M. That's comet. <laughs> commit, and then push. Push is optional, but I strongly suggest you do. Okay? Push sends upstream. Pull brings downstream. So you pull, work, and after doing your work, you add, you commit, you push, add, commit, push. Now, now because, because I do lots of these things, I put these three things actually in a little uh, bash file, so, and, I call it, and I called it git push, <laughs> one word. Because for commit, you have to actually add a command. So I'll tell you exactly if you are working on Linux, okay? But if you are using your uh, 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 tortoise git, then you can automate these things. I'll, I'll demonstrate. So what happens is this. Let me actually show it over here uh, because um, uh, uh, I want people to actually see what we are talking about. So uh, let's open TextPad, will, will do. So the, before you start, so before starting, you pull, okay, then do the work. Then after that, you add, you commit, then you push, okay? And that happens to any repository. So, what are we going to do now? When you are dealing with, uh, oh, so the very first time, you clone of course, okay? Which this cloning sometimes happens on your computers over here. Like you come to school, you don't bring your computer, and you clone. You clone on the computer at Seneca, and then after you clone at the computer at Seneca, uh, you do your work, you push, you turn off the computer, this is done. The, the repository is deleted over here, but you have your updates over there. But, so what are we doing? Why we are doing all these things? It is extremely important to have the .git ignore in your repository because that tells to Git not to gar uh, upload garbage to GitHub. It removes all the unnecessary files. That's very important. The Git ignore that you have has all the stuff that you want on Linux environment and on uh, Windows, okay? Next thing. What we do is this. So you do the exact same process that you did on your PC or your Mac or your Linux box, whatever you have at home, or on your Git bash. You do the exact same thing, but in a Linux way, and you create a, a key on matrix. But remember, when you are creating a key on matrix, as I mentioned it in workshop zero, it's a good idea to put a passphrase for it. Because if somebody logs into your matrix account, it means they have access to your GitHub. You don't want that. Remember, the key on a computer is a way to GitHub. It authenticates the computer to access GitHub. So because 
any administrator can log into your Linux matrix account. You don't want them to go to your GitHub. So put a passphrase. It doesn't have to be a complicated one, but put a very simple little thing over there to, to do the work. As a matter of fact, see what I did? I actually, um, I'll, I'll explain later. Anyways. So uh, let me just go over here to paint. So what we... So let's make it 1,500 by, I don't know, something. I just want it to be a big thing. Okay, so, so when we are talking about hit GitHub, let's say this is your GitHub account that you have, okay? This is your PC, and this is your Matrix account, okay? So when you are actually, when you are actually passing things back and forth, when you're actually passing things back and forth, you keep GitHub always updated. Therefore, you don't need to send anything from your computer to Matrix anymore. You don't need to do that. Why? Because when you actually send, keep your GitHub always active, when you go to Matrix, all you need to do is to pull it down to Matrix, and all the information will be transferred to Matrix. So if you want to submit your workshop, you finish it on your computer, make sure everything is good, you go on, you push it, you go on Matrix, you pull it, done. Everything's on Matrix, no more SFTP. If you are doing SFTP, you have to make sure the file is converted to text. You should, if you pass it as binary, it's going to pass garbage, the output's not going to come right, all these things may happen. But using this, it's civilized and it gives you an edge towards all the other people who don't know git properly so lots of people like it says it joined yesterday so yesterday is the time they started three years from now when somebody who gives your name they go to your github account they know you have been on github active for three years that's huge okay but if you are joining it on semester six, when you open, when you get an op open source uh, uh, subject, then so you want to get hired somewhere. They see that you joined one month ago. This this person doesn't know Git, so do that. Try to use try to use it. You got to get conflicts. There are going to be troubles with it. I know that. Okay, if you see it didn't work and oh my God, it's conflicted and I cannot find Farda to fix the problem for me, then do FTP. Fine. But it's like that. So do your work always in the repository on your computer. Be organized. Create directories. Add the directories to repository and commit and push them and you're fine. Okay? So let me come one by one to your uh, computers and see what we can do. Okay. Uh, who needs help? Well, let me pause this because we don't need to. Oh, such a diagram, eh? <laughs> All right. Okay, so and one of the students asked, so uh, again, I told it already, but because I didn't record it, I'm going to repeat it. Empty directories cannot be committed, added to the repository. It has to have a file in it. That when the file is added inside the directory, then the directory will be added. So don't worry if, if it's not added. As soon as you put something in it, it will be added. So two things. First of all, you cannot have a repository inside a repository. You cannot copy my OP workshops into your OP244 works repository. Okay? You cannot copy a repository into a repository. What you need to do, you clone mine beside it, not inside of it. Okay? And you don't modify mine, because mine is read-only. You keep pulling it. Don't touch that. If you touch that and you pull it next time, it's going to tell, hey, you changed some files and yada, yada. So don't do that. Copy the piece that you want into your own repository. So go into my repository. Copy the directory into your repository, then start working. So you cannot have a repository inside the repository. Remember that. Copy my work. Have it somewhere just for reading not for editing. Anything you want to edit, you first copy in your repository and then do your work. Uh, 
this is how your repository looks like. And let me turn off the lights. There we go. So this is how your repository looks like on, on the, uh, what should we call it, on, uh, on, the, on the browser, OK? So when I see something's wrong with it, because I have access to it too, OK? I'll go to Issues. And in here, I'm going to open a new issue. For example, I'm going to say, uh, you ignore this, OK? <laughs> or just say, just resolve it. Oh, we'll see what happens. OK, so, so now in here, I'm going to say something like, uh, say, your dot git ignore has problem. OK, and I'm going to say, uh, add uh, vs ignore stuff. OK, and I'm going to say submit new issue. OK, now she is going to receive an email from if the email that you actually sent, if the email that you have set for Seneca, the, your primary email, you're going to receive an email that there is a new issue. Then you can go to your issues, take a look at what it is, and simply fix it and say solved. OK, so if anything is wrong with any part of the thing, I open an issue. There you go. So she received the email that there is an issue. She looks at it. She sees what is the issue. Everything is done. She flags it as solved, and it's done now. I know it's solved. OK, so doing that, not only doing that, having this repository not only helps you to transfer files around, keep order of your stuff, but it helps me help you properly and in an orderly fashion and tell you exactly what is wrong where. OK? So remember that. And also, every single thing that I do over here, so let me just show you something. Now, for example, I come over here, beautiful picture, by the way. I'll come over here, and I'm going to go to the repository. And I'm going to go to OP244Works. And in here, I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to say, for example, um, Fardad was here. OK? And, and I'm going to commit this, saying that uh, Fardad says hello. <clears throat> and commit. So I changed one of your files. OK? So what you do when you get into here, you see it says Fardad, and it says Fardad says hello. If you actually click on this, it shows you exactly what was changed. See? This is file as it was. This is file as it is. These files are added. And it shows you exactly what it is. So if you ask for my help, we go on Microsoft Teams. I will pull your repository on my computer. So I have all your stuff on my computer. Then I share my window. And I ask you to tell me what is wrong. You tell me all the rules and regulations that we have. You tell me that I did this, did that, it's wrong. Then I'll go through your code and I'll fix your code. I commit and push it. You go on the comment of my, uh, comment of my commit and you see what is the difference. You look at the differences and you reflect about it. That's the price of me helping you. At any moment you need help for anything, I'll fix it for you, but you have to go see what is change and explain in your reflection what did I do to make it work. And life is beautiful. OK? So that's what we're going to do. Thank you. And thank you very much for offering your account for demonstration. So about the workshop. When workshop one comes up, you will see that the first one is very simple. Workshop number one, I actually copied it from previous semesters. So I give you a code. I ask you to separate it into modules. So you have a working code. Everything's beautiful. It works perfectly. It's in one file. What you need to do is to separate functions into modules and submit it back to me in properly organized module with all the stuff that the head of us is going to do. I'm going to teach you next, sem next semester. <laughs> no, <laughs> next, next day when you are coming to class, OK? But part two is going to fry your brains. 
Part two, I'm just asking you what to do, and you have to use your IPC 144 knowledge to do something that is probably difficult, more difficult than your final project. Don't worry if you can't submit it. You lose 2.5% of the thing if you can't submit it. It doesn't matter. But this semester, unlike previous semester, I'm giving you late uh, submissions. So you, ha you can be two days late, and each day is 30% penalty. But you can do it. I just, the reason I designed that thing to show you what you don't know about IPC. So you appreciate the lack of knowledge that you have about what you passed in first semester and actually study. Okay, so don't get discouraged. Don't think that the, the project, the, the uh, what you may call it, the semester is gonna be crazy and I'm gonna uh, give you crazy stuff. That's not the case, okay? I just gave you a simple program to write in C. You can use some of the C++, C++ knowledge that you have up to that point too, but you can use anything you want from IPC 144. There's no problem, okay? So essentially, I am writing, I am asking you, you're going to see it soon, that uh, a program that is about, uh, 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 you are writing a command line program. So essentially, when your program writes, a prompt comes, wait for a command line. You have three commands to issue. There, there is a file with list of students and their GPA and student numbers. The user over there puts greater than and put a GPA, hits enter. You go through the file, you find all the records that are greater than that GPA, you sort it in descending order, and you display it. Then you come back to the prompt again. Now user says less than 3.2. You go, do the exact same thing, you take all the uh, things that are less than G, uh, less than uh, 3.2, you sort it in the same thing, you display. You put tilde and a GPA. Then you're going to display all the GPAs that are within 0.5% of that value. So if it's 3.2, you show all the GPAs that is between 3.15 and 3.25. And you bring it up and you display it on a screen. That's your part two of workshop two. Just for you to see if you can write an application. And I'll ask you to do it in three modules. So you put your stuff in there. Uh, ask for help. I'll help you to do it. Start working on it. Wherever you get stuck, I'll help you. No problem. Uh, uh, gladly, but I just want you to know that if you have aced IPC 144 the way you were supposed to, you should be able to do that program in three hours. Okay. If you can't do it, it means you need to really listen to what I'm teaching in class. That's all. Okay? All right? Are we good? Okay. So again, it's not a threat. I'm just, when you see part two, don't go bananas. Oh my God, what am I going to do now? I'm going to drop the subject. That's not the case. It's not going to be like that. That's just the part two to, to assess your knowledge of, of C language for me. All right? All right. Any questions? Suggestions? Yes, is that a question about this or you have a problem? Problem? So, any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Okay. Let me pause.